even if you have not gone through the document, um, I think that there is no doubt that this is an extremely important issue. And I don't even want to necessarily separate science and engineering. I mean, this same problems exist in engineering institutions, mm -hmm. science institutions, probably non-science institutions also. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the suggestions that we are doing are probably going to be applicable in all other institutions. So let us take point by point, and I thought that point by point we can take up mm -hmm. each one of the point that she has suggested. I don't, I think the problem is probably shared by all of us, mm -hmm. that there is a serious problem. Uh, while we are trying to balance quantity, equity, and quality. I think the only point that I would like to make is that uh, for a very long time we had very, very few people who could get into higher education. I'm going to focus on higher education, though you broadened it and Ashoka was, uh, is also here, but uh, since the paper was on higher education, I thought that we'll focus initially on the higher education. And maybe towards the end we can talk a little bit in terms of skill development and other things that Ashoka has been talking about. So if you are focusing on higher education, um, the, for very long time the quantity was a serious problem. The number of students who could get into higher education itself was a uh, serious problem. It continues to be so, but uh, the fact that large number of private colleges have opened up in the last 20-25 years have actually accelerated the number of people who could get into higher education. Um, in terms of equity, number of things have been done. Some things have been criticized, but number of things has been done. So very large sections of different community people, different uh, uh, from urban, rural, are now able to get into the higher education. There is, of course, still a lo long way to go, but there is some move towards uh, that. But in terms of quality, as been pointed, pointing out in this paper, there has been very, very serious problem. And uh, I think it is, in this context, this paper is extremely relevant. And uh, uh, what we can talk about, each of the points that have been raised, we can, t uh, we can take each one of them and open up for discussion and then come to some kind of conclusion or at least okay. our views, express our views, and then we maybe towards the end we can try to <coughs> put things together. So we'll start with autonomy. The first issue that has been raised is academic autonomy. Um, what Katrina has proposed is that maybe one of the ideas should be that there are a large number of colleges, give a significant number of them autonomy, create clusters of about four or five institutions, one autonomous and three, four non-autonomous, create a process by which autonomous autonomy can actually be given gradually to most institutions. That's one of the proposals, and I thought that since most of you are teachers, what are pros and cons of that? How fast do we need to move on that? Uh, what does it really imply? Many things that she has talked about in terms of what we need to do, but I thought that we can open that up. So maybe we, in this session we'll uh, encourage all of you to react on what you think about uh, autonomy. So there's a mic going around, if you could just wait for the mic and make comments. Who would like to begin? Oh, this is sufficiently small room, people can hear each other also. Uh, what and we do is that we record this and, and then make a newsletter. Teachers That's why. Right. So <laughs> <can> <laughs> speak loud enough. But anyway, no. we can pass yeah. the mic around, yeah. but let's yeah. yeah. have a free discussion. So, Kanan, you want to say something? Can someone start? Yeah. Kanan, Kanan, right here. Yes, you and Professor Kanan. <laughs> yes, Professor Kanan. No, I, I think we should just start off by saying whether autonomy is something liked here or not. I get the feeling, I've heard from many people in Bombay that um, they are actually worried about autonomous colleges, many students, mm -hmm. uh, Mumbai University, mm -hmm. whereas this seems to be perhaps different in uh, Chennai. Mm -hmm. So I think that that perception has to be addressed if we want to make colleges autonomous. So that's all. So I why say. are they worried about autonomy? Do you, do you they, get a handle on that? They believe that, that uh, quality is going to, yeah, Mumbai University has a better perception of a uh, better standard, apparently. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, this is, I think so this if somebody would like to react to that. People from Mumbai yeah. University should. This, uh, this lady from Somaya, yeah. Uh, autonomy, I think, uh, in Mumbai particularly, many, many faculty members as well as uh, students refrain from it because they are afraid of quality, which is required in them. 
and the teachers have to have to upgrade themselves to those academic standards and i'm sorry to say i am in the mumbai university in a college affiliated but the quality standards of teaching is very poor first request is the churning of the syllabus which is redundant in mumbai university itself i think uh, dr kannan you are an online teaching on uh, and uh, we know you are having at the computer c plus and c plus which are redundant for higher education mm -hmm. so the syllabus orientation is a must for autonomy we so, first talk about academic autonomy and then think about financial autonomy i think the academic autonomy demands quality teachers which i think chennai is more open and mumbai is little closed and more of bureaucracy i'm so sorry I'm would it work this. if i could just pose a question would it work uh, uh, if uh, for example colleges were encouraged to say that we will be autonomous from academic year 2013 or 2015 and then plan and work towards it and then you yeah. know institute uh, faculty training programs revise syllabus by working with other co autonomous colleges put incentive systems in place would would that work better would somebody like to react to that one minute vincent let the academics really speak uh, dr doshma one one minute you've already said something i'll give you that uh, opportunity to speak anybody would like to react yes yes rosh It's a lot of resentment for uh, University of Mumbai affiliated colleges to go for autonomy. Uh, it is also that the management is not very willing because the guidelines which are put forward by UGC are not really taken in total. Uh, the governing council may have representations from the outside people more than from the management or from the college itself. Mm -hmm. So that is one factor which. i think almost all the colleges who are resenting autonomy have been talking about uh, we did have a convention for teachers at birla college on autonomy uh, i don't remember when but it was somewhere i think in the last academic year which i had attended and there uh, we had uh, joint secretary from uh, ugc western region dr g vishwanath and he said this needs to be really looked into seriously and he said if you want to apply for autonomy don't look at maharashtra government guidelines please look at ugc now i don't know why we have two separate uh, guidelines like this if it is ugc who is trying to promote autonomy for a good cause i think we should all follow the guidelines only of ugc and not of uh, my government or my state etc in order to have uniformity so that is i think one reason why there has been a lot of resentment also that uh, you know it might increase the workload and those regular uh, you know kind of uh, doubts which are coming in the minds of people but i think those like uh, father mascarenes has solved that issue by talking to his staff members that can be taken care of but i think managements themselves are hesitant are hesitant i'm sorry is basically because of this governing council issue thank you yes, ma'am uh, if you could just pass the mic yeah back, they, if you don't mind if you stand up <laughs> sure sure so uh, what she says is so true because hr and duya both got the autonomous status and they refused to accept it uh, mm -hmm. they said we don't want it because of the 15 members in the governing council eight come from outside so in terms of important decisions the the management can be overruled outside is outside of the colleges isn't it what are you looking by autonomy because by autonomy teachers don't or teachers management or trust don't want to be responsible they don't want to enhance or enrich or update themselves and the knowledge by autonomy you must share expertise of teachers and faculties make the higher education run 24 hours the schools colleges share teachers students expertise uh, low level students middle class elite students make 1000 floor buildings or within the redevelopment have yeah, no, not all your ideas together that. please Slow down, slow down. Not all your points together. Okay. Yeah. This fear about autonomy. So maybe others can help educate us as to why autonomy is fearful because it seems to be the need of the hour where an institution can reinvent itself depending on the local requirements from industry and society and things like this, which might be different in different regions. Correct. So our understanding is, uh, if I may just add in a little bit, our understanding is that somehow autonomy means different things to different people. So. 
for, for faculty resist autonomy partly because of workloads but also partly because um, they are worried about their employment conditions and their salaries. Does it mean that my uh, salaries are uh, not secure anymore in the hands of college managements? There's mistrust between managements of institutions and, and faculty. So that kind of thing happens. And as Kannan said, students are worried that, you know, if you give it into the hands of the colleges and then the colleges don't do a good job of education, then they're... Uh, then they are in, out of the frying pan into the fire. So there seems to be a lot of uh, uh, misconception of what academic auto I mean, what autonomy is. And therefore, I just want to point out that, you know, if you look, there is a central advisory board on education. It's called CABE. CABE had a uh, document, published a document in 2005, which was their study.